Welcome to Data Management. Um, today we're going to start Chapter 4, which is Permutations. Uh, 4.1 is Organized Counting. Um, so counting, as you've seen before, is counting objects, to know how many you have, counting your fingers when you're learning how to add and subtract. Um, the branch of mathematics that we'll be studying is called Combinatorics. Um, deals with ideas and methods for accounting, particularly for complicated situations. Um, you can do a wide range of possible applications using counting of objects. Um, this is more for counting large number of objects or trying to estimate how many objects there are. Counting the options or groupings that you have. How many ways can I put this many people together in this many groups if I have a classroom, for example. Or counting the roots, so if I have to get from this class to the next class, What's how many routes do I have, which one's the most efficient, um, and things like that. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So in this drawer, Johnny has two shirts, a red shirt and a blue shirt, and four pairs of pants, gray, black, navy, and white. And he wants to figure out how many different outfits he has so he can get dressed for school. So he has a couple of choices. So the first choice is which shirt should I wear? Should I wear the blue shirt or the red shirt? The second choice obviously involves the pants. So once he made the first choice, he can then choose what color pants to go with them. So this is what we call a tree diagram. So a tree diagram can help us count the number of choices that we have in total. So we choose one of the shirts. We choose one of the pants, then you can see if we can count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in total, Johnny has 8 different outfits to wear. So again, with the tree diagram, notice that the branches lead to the choices. Get the nodes um, tell you that our choice has been made and lead to the next choice. Usually we read our tree diagrams from left to right, just like when we read our our text. Um, this is also an example of what we call the fundamental counting principle. The task or process is made up of stages with separate choices for each stage, and we make a single choice at each stage. Then we can figure out the total number of choices by multiplying the number of choices for each stage. Okay, so for example of Johnny, we had two shirts and four pairs of pants, so two times four is eight. Another example is if we go to the buffet and we can choose one appetizer, one main course, and eight dishes. So how many different menus or combinations of the menu can we have? So again, we can use our fundamental counting principle. So M times N times B. So in this case, M is 7, N is 5, and P is 8, for a total of 280 choices. So therefore we have 280 choices for our menu or the buffet table. Since we're doing word problems, it's always good to have a statement at the end. Sometimes we need to count actions that are what we call mutually exclusive, so they can't happen at the same time. We can use what we call the additive counting principle. Um, so if we have more than one action, then if we have to choose one action out of all of them, then we can find out the total number of choices by adding up all possible choices for each stage. Okay. So again, here we have game show. Um, we have two members in the game show that can only communicate using um, displays of colored flags. They have four different colored flags, um, so we want to find, figure out how many different possible signals can they have to communicate with each other, assuming that they have a minimum of one flag per signal. So obviously if we have four flags, then the first choice of what color flag we want to put up first, is we have four for that, we choose one of those, we have three for the next, two for the next, and one for the last, assuming that there's no repeats, because that can get challenging and difficult. So we have 24 signals based on four flags. 
We can also do a three flag signal. So again, we have four for the first, three for the second, and two for the last, which again is 24 signals. We can also do a two flag signal, which gives us four for the first choice and three for the second, which is 12 signals. And finally, we can have a one flag signal, which obviously just is four for signals. Now you're going, oh, that looks more like the fundamental counting principle, which it is, for each stage. But we can only, each of these signals, varieties, so the number of flags, makes each thing mutually exclusive, because you can't have a four flag signal and a three flag signal at the same time. This is where the additive principle comes in. So the total number of signals is 64, because we add up each of these. And therefore, there are 64 total signals that can be sent. This is an example of what we call um, the cases or a case method. Okay, so each um, case is a step in the process. And they're all mutually exclusive, so that's why we can use the additive principle to determine the total number of choices or ways that we can put up a signal. You um, can also use that with the pair of dice. How many ways? You roll a sum of three or sum of seven. Okay, sums of three. You can either have one plus and two or two and one. So there's two sums of three. Sums of seven. Um, there's one and six, two and five, three and four, four and three, five and two, and six and one. So we have a total of six sums of seven. Since we can have a sum of three and a sum of seven at the same time on the same pair of dice, they're mutually exclusive. Um, so then we can just add them together using our additive principle. So there's two plus six is eight. So there's eight choices, or eight ways of having a sum of three or a sum of seven. Um, note here that or, when you use or between our choices, that usually indicates that we have to add. Many problems or situations that we'll look at, just for examples, uses a standard deck of playing cards. So here's the standard deck, so ace to king of four different varieties, uh, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. Um, notice that there's four suits, 13 cards in each suit, so there's 52 cards all together. So, deck of cards. Um, how many ways could we choose two aces, one after the other? So there's four ways of choosing the first ace. Once we've cho chosen it, there's only three ways of choosing the second ace. So four times three is twelve. Uh, another example, a black eight and a heart, one after another. Picking two cards. So there's two ways of picking a black eight and 13 ways of picking a heart. So again, we multiply those. And there's 26 ways of picking a black eight and a heart. Okay, notice here we use the word and and the multiplica er, multiplication. Okay. Next example is a black eight or a heart. Okay, so here we're using or, so that tells us that we have to add. So there, again, there's two ways of picking a black eight and 13 ways of picking a heart. Add them together. So there's 15 ways of picking a black eight or a heart. So in this case, we're only picking one card. But we have 15 possibilities to pick that card. Last example, looking very similar, but it's slightly different. We have a black eight or a club. So there's two ways, again, of picking the eight. 13 ways of picking a club. But wait, one of the black eights is a club, so we have to subtract that. So we have two plus 13 is 15 minus one is 14 ways of picking a black eight or a black club. Um, occasionally when we have a large problem, it's sometimes easier to, to use what they call the indirect method, which is the total number of choices, and then subtract the unwanted or undesired choices. Um, you should be able to find the same value, or you should definitely find the same value as the direct method. Um, usually one method is a little bit shorter than the other, um, or a little bit easier to see and figure out. So it doesn't matter which method you use, as long as you're 
doing accurate measure calculations and measurements, it should give you the same. Um, right. So area of combination lock uses numbers 1 to 40. Um, determine the number of combinations that do not have the repeated value. So we'll look at both methods. We have the direct method first. Um, so there's 40 ways of picking the first number, 39 ways of picking the second number, and 38 for the third number. So we multiply those together because there are the choices and stages. So obviously we're using fundamental counting principle. There's 59,280 different combinations. Using the indirect method. So the first number that we calculate is the total number of combinations. So that's 40 times 40 times 40. So 64,000. Total number of combinations with repeated values, because we want to find the repeated values and subtract those from the total. So we have two repeats. Um, so there's 40 times 39 times 1, which is 1,560 combinations. Since we can rearrange those three numbers in three different ways, or three different orders, and we have to multiply that by three. So 1,560 times three is 4,680. Um, three repeated values, so all three numbers are the same, it is 40 times one times one. Since we have 40 choices for the first one, and one choice for the second, one choice for the third, which is 40 choices altogether. So the total number of combinations without repeats is the total number, which is 64,000, minus the two repeats, minus the three repeats, which gives us a total of 59,280 different combinations. Okay, so as I said, the use of the direct or indirect method is up to the person doing the solution. One method is quicker or easily found than the other, but there's no rule of which one, which way is going to be. In this case, the direct method is more obviously faster, but it's good to see that both methods do work. So your homework tonight, after watching this video, is on page 229, number 1 to 5.